What's up guys, Genesis King here, and welcome to Mars Horizon, a space race sim that recently came out. Um, I'm excited to play this. It is sort of Kerbal Space Program-esque, if, if you've played Kerbal Space Program, um, but it's more on the simulation side of things, uh, rather than actually having control over your rockets when you launch them. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. We got a lot of sci-fi uh, gaming fun going on over here, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, let's go ahead and start a new game here. And in the game, uh, you can play as multiple space agencies. So the Europeans, uh, NASA, Soviet Union slash Russia, China, uh, as well as Japan. And each of them gets a different bonus to their agency. So for example, the European, European Space Agency uh, gets 50% rewards for joint missions. Uh, so if you're very diplomatic, which there is uh, cooperation and somewhat diplomacy in this game, uh, science income from bonus friendly and allied diplomatic relationships. So basically there's different strategies as you play as each of them. Today, we are going to start this series out by playing as NASA. So as NASA, uh, we achieving a top three milestone rank gets double our support. Uh, and what is support? So in this game, you as the space agency need the support of, I guess you could think of it as your government um, or the citizens of the country in which you are the space agency. So by achieving, being the first to do things, um, you get this support bonus. Uh, three additional contractors available, and that's a tech we have to unlock. And this has a tech tree and all that stuff, but we'll we'll take a look at that as we get further uh, into this game. And then finally, once we do get to sending astronauts into space, we get double the size of the recruit pool. So that's kind of cool. And if we wanted to go customize this, we could customize this. Um, we can change our traits. We can change who we start out friendly with, neutral with, antagonistic against, that sort of thing. But we're not gonna mess any of that. So let's go ahead and dive in as NASA. All right, so um, I think we're going to play this as Pioneer. I have played through this on the demo before. However, I don't know if we want to go veteran and get absolutely wrecked by the other space agencies. So we're going to go with Pioneer. We're going to turn the tutorial off since uh, I have played through that already. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, Director. The space race has begun. Staying ahead of the pack will require unprecedented feats of engineering and no shortage of daring. Your role is to develop our space program, leading us into orbit and beyond. Keep our agency at the forefront of space science and inspire generations to come with our triumphs. Humans will one day set foot on another planet. Make sure we get there first. Good luck, Director. So the whole premise of the game is you start out in, I believe, 19, yep, January 1957, the dawn of the space race. And the goal of the game is, number one, be the first to achieve milestones, which we're going to look through some of this stuff here in a second, and ultimately be the first to get to Mars. So what do we got going on over here? So we do have research trees, and it's broken down into missions, buildings, and vehicles. Uh, within this, basically each mission you have to do, you have to research. As you can see, big, big old tree all the way down here to payload Orion, uh, which is going to be crew to Mars, uh, as well as buildings. Different missions require different buildings. Uh, you've got different research labs, things along those lines, and, and then vehicles. Um, you need the various vehicles, larger vehicles, as you get into bigger and more deep space missions. But... Um, we're going to go ahead and start out by researching the small launch pad today. Uh, and that is because it is required for our first mission. So if we come in here, first thing we have to do is a test launch with a sounding rocket. Let's go ahead and plan the mission and let's design our first vehicle. Um, so basically you don't get to choose anything on this. Um, so we're just going to confirm. It does cost 80,000 credits, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it is telling us right here that in order to launch, we do have to have that small launch pad, but we can go ahead and start building the rocket. So let's go ahead and build it. Uh, it's going to take us two months and the construction has been approved. So we'll go back to the solar system. Uh, and down here is going to tell us when the next events are coming up. 
So that sh uh, rocket we just designed will be done building here in two months. And we're gonna have a funding review in one year from now. And as I mentioned earlier with the uh, with the approval um, that we talked about, so up here, support rather, um, that's how you get more funding is increasing your support. Um, you also up here, if we take a look at this, we have our funds. So how much money we currently have in the bank and that goes up monthly. Uh, our science, so we produce 112 per month. Um, there are buildings that we can build to do that. Uh, we also get science for missions, that sort of thing. Support that we just talked about. Uh, and yeah, tier one is talking about the level of support and we have 100 support to get to the next tier. But let's go ahead and go to the next month. And we have finished small launch pad research. Um, so we do need to hop in here and actually grab something else. And this is where I always can't decide what we need to do. We have the buildings for the first mission. I guess let's go ahead and start grabbing the next level of rockets. You know what, actually? Uh, no, 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 no. We're gonna go with the next level rocket, that's fine. And we can come in here and actually design our base, which is pretty, pretty cool. So here's our small launch pad. Uh, it is going to cost us 50,000 credits. We have 73, so we're good to go. Um, let's grab that, build it. And you can pretty well build anywhere you want as long as it is attached to your base. Now, you see the little plus signs and when I put it there, a minus sign. Uh, down there in the bottom right hand corner, you get boosts uh, and negative debuffs um, for placing it adjacent to the various buildings um, within your base. So here, we get minus 2% vehicle build time uh, and minus 1% payload reliability. However, if we just pop it off of this over here, we don't get any negatives and we get a boost um, or a decrease rather to the time it takes to build our vehicles. So we'll go ahead and pop that bad boy there. Um, I do think that is going to take a month to build. Yep, one month. All right, so let's pop out here. Uh, and again, now that is down there on the events. So let's, and you know what? Actually, we're thinking long term here. I'm going to go buildings. I actually want to get a research lab built. We're going to do that um, because it's going to boost our research, which means we can get through these tech trees quicker, uh, which in the end is ultimately what is going to win us the space race. All right. So next month. All right. Small launch pad is complete and we have finished our vehicle, which means we can go ahead and launch it or at least schedule the launch. Uh, and it does have a pretty crap <laughs> uh, launch reliability. Um, but you know, hey, it's your first rocket. What are you going to do? All right, let's go into launch preparations. So um, once we get um, the correct building, we can actually do training, which means you can select what to boost. And the further out you schedule your launch, uh, the more reliability you can get, the more science from it you can get, that kind of thing. But right now we can't do that. So let's go ahead and pick a date to launch. And looks like our competing agencies actually have not scheduled their launches yet. So we are actually winning the race right now. Uh, because we're not doing training, it really doesn't matter when we select. So let's just go ahead and do next month. Let's do it. Confirm the setup. Boom, we've been approved. We are launching the sounding rocket in April of 1957. Next month. All right, guys, here we go. Is it going to blow up? Probably. All right, let's launch the mission. Cross our fingers for good weather. Uh, hey, we've got good weather. So weather's actually a thing in this. Uh, it can be, I think raining is the one animation it has, um, but it does rec decrease your reliability. And it is a pretty cool thing when it is a race, right? So when you're scheduled to launch in front of, let's say the Soviets, but you have bad conditions. So you see here, 7% boost. Uh, bad conditions can take it down anywhere from 7 to 15 that I've seen. It's a it's a really big choice, or it feels like a big choice to say, you know what? We're going to launch in the rain because we want to beat the Soviets to space. Uh, but in this case, we're, we've got good weather, so we're going to go ahead and launch. Five, oh, four, come on. Don't blow three, up. Don't blow up. Don't blow two, up. One. Here we go. Oh. We have liftoff. 
And really, even if it blows up, you still get good stuff out of it, at least um, this early on. Oh, wow, that's loud. Um, as you go later, obviously you get people, astronauts on there, and yeah, you don't want to blow those guys up. Hey, so we had a good mission. Did we get a positive outcome? Oh, no, we were just short of it. Um, so this down here basically tells you what uh, what sort of bonus you get, right? So critical failure, you get nothing. If you get a negative event, you get a negative modifier going forward. We landed in the neutral category, uh, which means it was successful, but meh, nothing great came out of it. Or we can get a positive event. And obviously we fell just short of that. So continue. Um, and the other thing we have to bear in mind is as we design rockets, the more we use them, the more they level up and the better their reliability gets, um, which we'll kind of see as we go forward. So the sounding rocket isn't that important, um, but we can design various rockets. Uh, obviously, it's a space race game. And as, the more we launch them, the more reliable that they get. Which makes sense, right? Grow in knowledge, you get to know the rocket better, make upgrades, like that kind of thing. All right, so from this mission, we got 150 favor and we get 250 bonus research for the next month, it looks like. Yep, so we're gonna get a decent amount of research going for. All right, well, we were the first to launch our sounding rocket, so let's go ahead and go to the next month. All right, we have reached era one, the dawn of space flight. As rocket technology advances, so does the prospect of exploring beyond the confines of the planet. Yet the public continues to question whether the fledgling agencies can overcome the dangers of space flight. And we have unlocked the moon. Nice. Very, very good. Okay, so let's pop in to Earth here. And you can see all the missions that we're going to have to complete over here on the left. And what's kind of nice about it is you can select it and it will tell you over here, hey, this is what you still need to do um, in order to be able to launch this mission. So, for example, the next thing we need to do is artificial satellite. However, we need to finish researching the artificial satellite mission. Uh, we have to build and research rather research, actually, um, the Explorer module and we also need, or should, to make it more successful, um, research one of the other rocket ship parts. Um, so, yeah. So, we need to research this guy to even do this mission. Um, what are we researching now? Nothing? I don't think we're researching anything. No? Oh, I can't. I didn't actually research that. Whoops. Alright, and on our base... Uh, we did finish the research lab. I think it's important we get this build. Now, if I put you here, uh, payload build costs 2%. So 2% there, 3% there. And if we put it next to the actual launch pad, we get negative 10 research per month. Okay, let's just pop you over. Do I not have the money for that? Oh, no, I don't. I could wait a month and put it there. Can I build you here? No. Okay, let's wait a month and drop that. Because I think ideally we're going to have it over here. All right. All right, so research on that is complete. Let's go straight into the payload explorer. Um, well, payload called explorer, not literally payload explorer. Um, let's go back into our base. Oops, not there. And let's drop our research lab. I think we want to pop it over here. All right. Actually, let's go ahead and go forward to the next event. And we can also over here in our active missions, we can check how far people are there. So looks like the Europeans have completed this. Uh, the Chinese have their launch scheduled, and the Soviet- wow, the Soviet Union lagging, lagging. Alright, so, we can actually start planning this mission now, but I want to make sure we get these two stages for more reliable. So, uh, let's get the booster called Vanguard, and then we'll do the upper stage of Viking. 
So let's go ahead and plan the mission. Uh, and we need to select our payload. So let's do the explorer. At this stage, I think we want to go with the higher reliability. And potentially the cheaper cost. So we're just going to go with the standard. And we're going to go ahead and build the payload. And we can build that while we're waiting to research the, the parts for the rocket. Uh, and once we get those parts, then we can actually build the rocket. All right, next event. Research lab is complete. So we should see a decent boost. Uh, oh, and we finished the booster section. Let's get the upper stage called Viking completed. Um, Can I plan that mission yet? Okay, that's still one more month until it's completed. Uh, and how's everybody else doing here? Mission is not planned. Okay, so we're winning right now. Next month. All right, we have built our first artificial satellite. So, boost to vehicle build time, okay. All right, let's design our vehicle, which we actually just finished the two stages that we want for that. Let's design a new one. Um, so for the upper stage, we want that. And over here on the right, all of these need to be checkboxed or uh, checkboxed. Uh, they need to be check marked so that uh, the rocket can actually carry the payload. If there's anything red over here, um, then it won't launch. So, for example, if we get further into the game and I select this thing, but we're putting astronauts in orbit, more than likely this this isn't going to be selected or uh, checkbox green as ready to go. So let's select that part. Let's select you. And we're all good to go over here. Let's confirm. And we actually don't have the cash right now to build this, which is unfortunate. But let's go ahead and go into the research. Um, I think we want to go space craft assembly. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. And yeah, active missions. We can't do anything with it right now, unfortunately. So we got to go one more month so we can get the funding. Ooh, here we go. Um, so the Europeans, uh, the Europeans are launching a satellite in nine months. China is launching in 11 and Japan is launching in eight. So we want to try to be nine months from now. Was that a you? Active missions. Here we go. We can build it. Uh, it's to be completed in one month. So December of 57. All right. So that's going to be finished. And now there is our first artificial satellite called Horus. And you know what? We can come up with better names for that. We can rename that later. Uh, launch preparations. Let's do it. All right. So this is the training that I was talking about right now. All we can do is science training. So basically, it'll give us a 400 science reward uh, and it'll give us a little boost of max training bonus and um, training bonus per month. All right, let's select the launch date uh, And here. Now that they actually are launching, you can see when others are scheduled. So we have to make a choice. So if we select January, which is next month, um, we have a 68 percent reliability. However, Actually, you know what? Reliability stays the same. Total bonus is what changes, right? Over here. So total bonus. The further out we do it, i.e. the more training that we do, um, the better bonus that we're going to get out of this. But we also want to be first, right? And I want to beat Japan. So we're going to go a little bit earlier, even though we're not going to get as much of a bonus out of it. And it looks like it maxes out at 25%. Yeah, it does. All right, we're going to go February just in case we have bad weather. And at the very minimum, we can then reschedule towards June and at least do it at the same time as Japan. All right, confirm mission. Scheduled for February of 1958. Now, do we have any other buildings that we can build? No, we don't. Okay. Alrighty, next month, we get our funding review. Alright, we're up to tier three. 
Uh, so current tier plus 79k, and the next one's 105. All right, spacecraft assembly facility is done. ESA is launching their artificial satellite in six months. Jokes on them, we're launching next month. <laughs> uh, okay, do we go ahead and go into the next mission, or do we build rocket? You know what? Let's do the rocket test pad. That's fine. And then, do we want to spend cash on our base? Yeah, you know what? We might as well, uh, because this is actually going to unlock the training option uh, for payload reliability, which is, I think, something we want. We put it here. We can't wet. Well, can't afford that. Uh, but if we put it there, we get what? Vehicle costs, vehicle time. Yeah, let's let's drop it there. That's fine. All right. Next month. Here we go. Launching our first artificial satellite in 19... February of 1958. Uh, auto date, science training. All right, 65% reliability. All right, let's launch it. Come on. Yes, good weather. Very good weather. Okay. Uh, launch day for Horus. Oh, I'm nervous, guys. I'm real nervous. Like, I just I have a bad feeling this is going to blow up. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling this is going to blow up. Uh, good conditions, so we get a plus 6% reliability boost. And it's 74% launch reliability. Let's do it. Five, four, three, two, Come on, baby. One. Come on. Go, 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 go. Come on. Please, please, please. Woof, didn't blow up. Josh. All right, did we get something good out of it? Nope, neutral vent. Damn. All right. Well. See here, so we have leveled up our Vanguard booster and our Viking, so reliability has gone up. So the more we launch, the better. All right, let's go ahead and continue. And now, um, this is sort of the game within the game, I guess you could call it. Uh, once you launch a satellite, uh, anything like that, you have to do things to collect comms and data. So let's go ahead and continue and take a look at this. Um, and we do this by doing various tests by using power. Okay. So, for example, signal return test will get us one of comms. And it takes one power and outputs one comms. Or... Um, we can do other things, a combination of the two to get this, that kind of thing. Um, but what we want to get is a minimum of two comms, a minimum of two data, but we get a 50% bonus if we get three comms and three data. So let's plan accordingly. Uh, first move, we have no choice but to use power for an output. Um, I think... You know what? Yeah, let's just do that. That's our first command of this mission. Uh, and then I guess we might as well do a second. Confirm commands. And we do have a limited number of turns, right? Um, cool. We got that one. Got the one there. And we should... Get the, oh, no! Oh, crap. Uh, okay, so there was atmospheric interference. Uh, terrestrial weather patterns have caused a degradation in the signal. This command output will be reduced by what? Uh, unless we spend another energy to resist the event. I think we do need to resist it. Which means we need to recharge next. Dang. Okay. Um, so you can see down here, we've got the three turns to do this. And uh, I think we're going to have to recharge. But do we really need to do two is the question. Do one. We still have to get to that. Um. Mm. <laughs> we could do this. Get up to the three. You know what? Actually, let's let's double charge it. That'll be fine. All right. So we've got that now. 
Uh, let's use one of these to get to the three. There. And then we will have one more turn. Yes. Okay, that's what we want to do. Um, we want to try to get to three there. And then we want to do that. All right, confirm it. Accept. So we've got the three there. And we should have enough power to then get our ideal alignment. Hey, preemptive payload positioning resulted in the antenna being ideally aligned for the transmission. Uh, so we had the negative atmospheric event earlier. This is a positive one. So we actually get to our bonus. Nailed it. Yeah, yes, applause, everyone. Applause. Alright. Milestone achieved. First for the artificial satellite. Get some approval, get some research. Boom. Alright, so, um, we've put our first artificial satellite into orbit, and I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap this episode up here. Uh, we'll continue this. Um, I think this will be coming out maybe twice a week. Haven't decided at this point in time, uh, but I'm certainly enjoying it. I hope you are. Again, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Even if you're not new, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe, like I said, for more sci-fi gaming fun. I'll talk to you in the next one. Later, everybody.